Hi all, Saren over here and I'm back again with another video. It's fair to say that when Plunderstorm was announced it was met with a mixture of reactions. I know my initial reaction wasn't hugely favourable, but like anything in life, give it a go before you say you don't like something, and to be honest with you, I'm kind of converted. If you've never played a Battle Royale style game before, then Plunderstorm will be a bit of a WTF moment for some. But if you're used to games like Fortnite, then it will be something you will be playing for a while. What I thought I would do though is pull together a bit of a noob's guide to Plunderstorm to help out new players trying to figure out exactly what they should be doing. Before I do that, I would love it if you could join me over at Twitch where I'm streaming every Friday at 8pm GMT time. A lot of the tips I'm about to give you came from my stream yesterday, so drop me a follow so you can be alerted when I go live. It would be great to see you in chat where you can tell me what content you want to see as well as being part of my growing community. Plunderstorm is a battle royale game where 60 real non-NPC players are dropped into a map on flying parrots with the aim to be the last man standing. You all start off as a level 1 with no abilities other than an attack and a health potion that has a 30 second cooldown. There are NPC players of normal and elite quality who reward XP, drop plunder which is the main currency of Plunderstorm and drop abilities in a variety of qualities that you're used to in World of Warcraft, common, uncommon, rare and epic. And of course you have the other players, all 60 of them, all trying to level up in the game to become more powerful and reach that level 10 cap before the end of the game. There are also similar quality chests available to loot that contain abilities on plunder, notably the golden chest which provides a very large amount of plunder which is what you're going to need to grind renown. One thing that you'll be unfamiliar with if you've never played a battle royale is the closing zone that's called a storm. This shrinks the playable area of the map over time and is announced in the game that it's coming and ultimately it forces players together to engage in combat to really show who is number one due to the high damage a player suffers being outside the eye of the storm. Outside of individual games, like I say, there is a renowned track of 40 levels that reward a multitude of items including mounts, pets and transmog that can be used across classic and retail World of Warcraft. To grow your renown, you need to gather plunder in game. The more plunder, the faster you achieve renown rank 40. One addition since release is the improvement of matchmaking rating, or MMR for short, which stops renown rank 1 players meeting a much more experienced renown rank 30 player for example. Another thing to note is that Plunderstorm is completely macro and add-on free, so everybody has the same access to information as everyone else, just to make it a fair playing field. One of the key parts of Plunderstorm are the abilities that you can gather. These are random drops from NPCs, magical chests and players. The main attack abilities that you have are Earthbreaker, Sunder the Earth in an area around the caster, damaging and stunning enemies hit. This is a great AoE attack. Firewhirl, engulf yourself in flames and rush forward damaging enemies you pass through. Absolutely damaging. Holy Shield, Hurl a blessed shield forward, damaging enemies in its path before returning to you. Recast to trigger a holy explosion at the shield's location. This is fantastic for multiple mobs. Mana Sphere, conjure a mana sphere, then project it forward, damaging and knocking back enemies it passes through. Hold to increase the sphere size. You have to have your aim spot on because it goes in a straight line. Rhyme Arrow, fire an icy arrow that seeks your current target, damaging them and nearby enemies. A great splash damage effect. Searing Axe, slam down a Molten Axe, spewing Molten Lava forward that damages and knocks back enemies. This is great for multiple close combat. Slice and Winds, envelop yourself in razor sharp winds, then lunge forward damaging enemies in your path. Hold to increase the lunge distance. Again, fantastic for multiple mobs. Star Bomb, channel the Cosmic Void, compressing it into a bomb that explodes after a short delay. Enemies struck or pulled into the blast. Great, great area of effect spell. Storm Archon, call forth the elements, unleashing a destructive barrage in front of the caster. Recast Storm Archon to call another element. It can be recast twice. Again, multiple hits, fantastic piece. Toxic Smackerel, smack targets in front of you with a Toxic Mackerel, poisoning them and inflicting damage. Poison inflicts damage over time. If a target is already poisoned, Toxic Smackerel deals bonus damage. Great for dealing with those uh, people who run away from you. Explosive Caltrops, evade backwards while spreading explosive caltrops that slow and damage enemies that trigger them. This has been widened in the latest patch, but uh, yeah, fantastic for slowing players down. 
Fade to shadow. Fade into the shadows, teleporting in the direction you are moving whilst entering stealth for a short duration. Fantastic for getting away from those pesky little uh, players who hunt you down. Fae form. Transform into a fae creature. Gain an immunity to harmful debuffs. Increase movement speed and damage reduction for a short duration. Cannot attack while transformed. An absolute must for running away. Hunter's Chains. Chain yourself to your current target. While chained, recast Hunter's Chains to advance in your target's position. If your chain target moves out of the chains range, they'll just be pulled back towards you, so they can't run away. Lightning Bullock. Raise a charge Bullock that negates damage taken briefly. Receiving an attack grant bonus movement speed. Removes harmful debuffs and harms enemies near the caster for a very short duration. Again, fantastic for multiple mobs. Quake and Leap. Leap forward in a large arc, then crash down damaging and stunning enemies you land on. Recast while airborne to crash down early. This takes a little bit of getting used to because you don't actually have a landing um, modal, so you can't really see where you're going to land. Repel. Erect a powerful arcane barrier that repels all damage and harmful debuffs. Then silence and knock back enemies around the caster. Great for damage reduction. Snowdrift. Create a snowy blizzard in an area or around the caster, periodically affecting enemies with a stacking slow. Again, great AoE slow. Steel Traps. Toss a cluster of steel traps directly in front of the caster rooting and damaging enemies that trigger them again this has been widened and this is fantastic for uh, multiple mobs that jump on you windstorm turbulent winds form in front of the caster that surge forward damaging and stunning the first enemy struck great for going through a pack of mobs or a pesky little player who likes to just dodge but as i mentioned before these come in common uncommon rare and epic qualities if you have one already equipped and a better quality version drops you will see a little arrow next to the item to show you that it's an upgrade since the release though, several of these abilities have been classed as overpowered and have been significantly nerfed, particularly the best ability to gather, the Fire Whirl, which hits like a truck to be honest with you, as well as Fair Form, which was a great defensive to use that also allowed you to flee from fights at great speed. Honestly, the best thing for running away. Several of these abilities can be used as CC and defensive abilities, as well as strong attacks. That's where the beauty of Plunderstorm really comes in, because you just don't know what a player you're about to have a fight with actually has equipped. As you play your first few games though, you will become accustomed to how the game works through trial and error, but there are things that you should be doing every single game to maximise the plunder that you gather. These are, first game of the day, 800 plunder bonus, so it's a good idea for you to try and play every day if you can. Remember, it's a limited time event, so maximise that. When choosing the spot to land at the beginning of a match, try to land on an elite for an easy kill, a quick level boost and some free plunder. The elementals are a great place to land because there's four of them, so if you miss one, you can just quickly get the other one. If you get a new quest when you land, which should technically happen every game, do the quest for 250 plunder as soon as possible, in case you get killed early on. Loot golden chests as soon as you see them, because these will contain a massive plunder, and this is what helps you level up as quickly as possible, as well as counting towards your renown. There are also some interface changes I'd make, which really helped the game out for me. Rebind your keys if you're a keyboard spammer. Fury Warrior, I've got a rotation, it's called Button Mash. This will help you move your health portion away from your random finger smashes so you only use it when you actually intend to. Remember to use F as interact when you're on top of spells as opposed to clicking on them. It saves a millisecond of time and if you're like me, even more time trying to spot where your mouse actually is. I didn't realise how much I relied on a weak aura to show me where my mouse was. And as I play the game, I'm going to be releasing more videos on Plunderstorm about tips to maximise renown, but here are three that I've figured out already. Personally, I love Starbomb as an AoE for grinding mobs, especially if you can gather up lots of mobs and blast them down. There's lots of XP to be had if you can get it on early in the game, so things like angry chickens, raptors, tarantulas, gather them up, boom, loads of XP. Kite one of the two pieces of hate for the plunder that they drop, you could solo them, but drag it out to reap those rewards. It drops abilities and plunder. If you have Fate to Shadow, you can stealthily rob a down player's plunder after they've lost a 1v1. I haven't recorded that, but that's very sneaky. And that's it. A quick beginner's guide to Plunderstorm with some tips thrown in. If you found the video useful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. But in the meantime, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.